Well, you're receiving this award uh, for the Championship Community Play of the Year. You've been doing, I've got it, I've got it here in front of me, the amount of community work you've been doing. Just talk to me a little bit about why the community and the people around you mean so much and why this award means such a, it's such a big thing for you. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's really nice um, to be uh, recognised, I guess, but it's also, I also find these things a little bit tough because you don't do it for these reasons. You do it because you want to and you want to help people and make a difference in the area. And it's something that throughout my career so far, I've always wanted to be involved with and kind of made an effort to be involved with. I think as players, we have a responsibility to our to our club and you know, the city which we play football in because we're in a fortunate position and a lot of young people um, look up to us, rightly or wrongly. Um, quite a lot of people do. So I think we we carry that responsibility and I think we have to channel that into to helping as many people as we can. And it's something I've always enjoyed and you can just be yourself as well. It's not all about football. That just usually bridges the gap and breaks the ice a little bit when you go to meet young people or or help out in the area. It sometimes jumps you through hoops, but at the end of the day, you can be your normal self then when you when you get into it. I think if you take football out of it, I was brought up with my mum who volunteered the majority of my childhood. Um, you know, my dad worked and my mum did volunteering work of all different charities. And that's where kind of the seed was sown, I guess, for, uh, you know, maybe doing a little bit more. And my mum was always... Um, not on my back, but always, you know, aware of you can volunteer if you want to, have a look at things, blah, blah, blah. And um, I was lucky, up a, lucky enough at Falkirk, which was pretty much my first professional club. I had Tramway before then, but not for long. We just naturally did a lot of community work. Um, I got on really well with the, the uh, I don't know what his exact role was, but Kieran at the club, um, still speak to him now. And he would get me doing, I was probably doing three or four a week, to be honest. It would be like, I don't know, opening up a cafe and then, you know, next thing it'd just be a signed shirt, a signed ball or meeting a kid who's a big fan, doing a video for a veteran or something like that. And that's where kind of I realised when I went to Rotherham and I wasn't doing so much, that actually I missed it because it was a bigger club. It was more um, paperwork. You know, we, as lads, we would only have one player appearance a month and that was kind of strict and you didn't do any more than that. And you slowly fall into just doing that. And that was when, obviously, I started to kind of look look elsewhere myself, um, away from the club, at what I could do, and fell into working at Bluebell Bluebell Wood, and then at Cardiff, a similar kind of thing happened when I first came. I wasn't playing so much, and it's hard then to switch your mind into uh, community stuff. But eventually, I've kind of got to know people in the area, and then obviously, coronavirus had a massive effect on what I was doing at home and. And yeah, just started helping out with that. And yeah, just it's something that I enjoy doing. I don't do it for any other reason than I like to feel like I've helped someone or played that little part, even if it's a 20 second video to someone for their birthday. It's not hard for us to do as players. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing what you've been up to, um, particularly in a year that's been a pandemic year. Do you think it's even more important that players like yourself and clubs get involved with the communities, particularly not only during this pandemic, but also after it as well? Yeah, and I know Cardiff um, do a lot in the community. They have a fantastic foundation. They're unfortunate enough to be an ambassador for now. And yeah, I think especially in young people, you know, I found my, my mental health struggled a little bit in, in uh, the first lockdown because we're so used to being active. I'm not very good at sitting still and, don't get me wrong, I'm still out running every day, but, um, you know, you do that one run, you come home and then what do you do? You know, and I'm in a fortunate enough position that I've got, you know, family around me and, uh, well, they live miles away, but I've got my missus here and, you know, we're settled. But you picture a 14, 15 year old who's their, their only kind of salvation or whatever is at school and they're not now going to school. They've got a tough, bit of a tough life at home. I think as the club, that's the, that's the thing that they're doing a lot of at the moment is helping young people and their mental health. And there's only so long they can sit on a PlayStation or Xbox if they're fortunate, fortunate enough to have one. Um, if not, I, I imagine this has been a really, really hard time because it's been a hard time for us, you know, let alone these you know, young people who are going through a tough enough time in their life as it is um, with the pandemic added on. I wanted to 
ask about your volunteering with the NHS and as, as a responder. It says here, I mean, that's another string to your bow, as it were, in terms of the community work you're doing. I mean, talk to me a little bit about that experience and also trying to balance your time between being a professional footballer and also being this person as well with the NHS. Yeah, well, obviously this was this was in the first lockdown. Um, so my time at training, we, we weren't training. So I was doing my one run a day, a bit of gym work in the garage. And then I wanted to see how I could help really um, because we didn't know much about this pandemic at the time. You know, there was a lot of panic, a lot of worry from people not being able to get to the shops, all that stuff. So I joined the Responder app and a couple of weeks went by and I had no contact from them. And it never really took off in Wales, to be honest. So I joined all my local um, community volunteer groups, which are obviously for the elderly, you know, go and do the shopping, all that stuff. Never really, I wasn't needed. So I had to kind of search for something. And it was this uh, local charity that was set up called Feed the NHS. And basically it was about, at the start of the pandemic, only the supermarkets were open, weren't they? So there wasn't really much stuff. And long story cut short, there wasn't enough food on the wards. There wasn't enough drinks. There wasn't. So we were doing our bit, collecting um, donations, which to be fair, majority came from the lads at the club, which was fantastic. We had a big whip round and got a lot of stuff. And we just went round all the different wards to all the nurses, doctors, uh, different clinics. We went to the fire station. We went to police station, we went to prison. Uh, so it wasn't just the NHS. It was people that, you know, we're working really hard at the start of the pandemic and actually didn't have an hour to go and go to the shop, get the food. Um, and it was just, what can we do? And it helped them and it put a smile on their faces. We had a couple of people who, you know, were quite teary when we turn up with just a gift box of simple things, chocolate, sweets, crisps, a few healthy snacks, water. Um, and yeah, that really took up a lot of my time in lockdown. But it gave me a purpose and it gave me something to get up for and uh, go and do it. I think it was pretty much every day at one stage for a good few weeks and months. So I enjoyed it and uh, I'm glad that we're out the, you know, the, the tail end now, hopefully, of this pandemic. 